the clamp node can create a maximum or minimum value of any input. You can connect any value to the input of the node, set a min or a max, and the new value created is the output of the node. There aren't a whole lot of common or simple uses for the clamp node, so I'm just going to do a quick example of how the node works. I have a series of polygon bars here, each bound to two joints, so I can move the bars up and down, like you see here. So let's just say I want to set it up so as I move this icon here, which I've called the volume icon, as I move the icon, the bar that the icon is in front of gets higher and higher and higher as the icon moves further forward. Well, to do this, the clamp node provides an advantage because it allows me to set a minimum of zero and then set a maximum for each bar so that the bar will stop once I get past the bar with the icon. So to do this I'm going to connect the translate value, the translate x value of this icon into the translate y value of these joints. So I'm going to select the joints and the icon, and I'm going to bring them all into the node editor. Just get rid of the shape node. All right, let's just try and organize this a little bit. Two, three, four, five, and six. And here's our icon. Let's open all these guys up. And Next, we'll bring in the clamp node. Now, I'm going to bring in one clamp node for each joint. Each clamp node has three input values, so if I wanted to, I could just do two clamp nodes for all six joints. But in this case, it's a lot easier to showcase with when I make one clamp node for each joint. Let's see, six, five, four, three, two. Where the first one is, it's behind there. There we go. So I'm going to start by plugging the translate X into the input R of each clamp node. One, two, three, four, and six. All right. So now I'm going to set the min and the max for each node. Now these min and max, again, they're going to limit the value of the input to a specific range. So I want to set it up so once this icon reaches a value of 2, this bar reaches a height of 2 and stops from there. So to do that I'm just going to set a min r of 0 because that's the icon at its default and set the max to 2. And I'm just going to go up two for each clamp node. So clamp two is four, clamp six is eight, uh, clamp four is eight, clamp five is ten, and clamp six is twelve. And so now I'm just going to plug the output R of each clamp node into the corresponding translate Y of each joint. 
translate. Okay. Output R. Oops. I want it into translate Y. Output R. Translate Y. And we'll keep going. All right, so now you see all the cylinders have shrunk because the translate Y value is down to zero, because it's at its default. But as I move this control, now you see how the clamp nodes work and why I set the max value for each clamp to a higher one. So once this icon reaches two, the first bar stops. Once I reach four, the second bar stops, and so on. So there aren't many practical uses for the clamp node, and that's why I showcased just a fun little example here. But the clamp node for sure has its uses. With this completed, the last video in the series goes over the set range node.